Ah, the MacBook Pro M1. Is it possible to install Altium Designer on this beautiful machine? I like using the MacBook for all of my engineering work. I have a MacBook Pro 2015, 15 inch, and it's just been fantastic. But I needed a new computer for better video editing, uh, improved speed. So I decided to get the M1 MacBook Pro 13 inch. And that was just going to stop there at the video editing. But somebody asked a question on a forum about whether Altium would work on the M1 MacBook Pro. And through using parallel software and through the Windows Insider program, they were able to test and actually install it on the MacBook, but there were no updates. So I decided to go try it out myself and I'm gonna let you know the results upcoming in this video. Okay, so the thing is you wanna get Parallels Desktop or Mac. I highly recommend getting the latest Parallels Desktop. You can download a free trial, which is what I'm using in this video. And so just go ahead, download it, You'll install it on your Mac. Also, it will automatically detect, or at least it might automatically detect that you have an M1 chip. See, it says here, it now runs on Intel and Apple M1 chip, and just download it. Then we can install Altium and other software on top of the Windows Insider Program software. If you're not already part of the Windows Insider Preview Program, go ahead and just Google Windows Insider Preview, ARM64. Join the program, it's completely free to do so. Then you'll get access to the Windows Insider of ARM64 version of Windows. Follow the instructions, install Windows, and then you'll be ready to go. All right. Have you ever had a situation where you're designing something in Altium Designer or maybe an Eagle or KiCad and you want to share the design with a manager or any other engineer who's working with the project or at least overseeing the project, but they don't have the software installed? Well, you can send them the design, not through just a PDF and everything. I mean, that's good, but you can send them the design through an upload online on the Altium 365 online viewer. This is really cool because they can just go on their link, click on the link that you send them, and then view the PCB design or the schematic design and leave their uh, look at their feedback and comments. They can even do a little recorded video. They can just look at everything online and give their feedback. They don't have to use their PDF editor and all that stuff like that. All right. so. Check out the Altium 365 viewer. It's working for multiple kinds of software like Fusion 360 or EgoCAD, more specifically KeyCAD, Altium, of course. And it's just really slick and clean. If you use this for your collaboration, it will go much faster, much smoother. And also it's just really cool to be able to look at designs online just like that. Okay, let's go ahead and try Altium. I did my updates to the operating system, the Mac OS. I also did updates to the ARM Windows operating system. Now I'm going to try Altium. Let's click on it and see how fast it loads. Okay, so I've updated Windows, I updated Mac OS. Now I started Altium. And it's taken a while to load everything. So yeah, now this is not that much different from loading Altium on my 2015 MacBook Pro. It does seem to be taking a bit longer though. So I'm, I see that it's also trying to load the project that I had open previously.
this is not out of the ordinary Altium behavior. Uh, Altium tends to take a while to load up on machine. Okay, so now it's time to sign in. People had been reporting issues that they couldn't sign in with a previous build of this beta or this Windows Insider Preview, depending on the version. So I have the latest version right now as of this video, as of this recording. All right, it's still trying to do some things, but it looks like it's loaded. So when I click on the schematic here, there's a bit of a delay. There's some delay there uh, on the click. Let's reduce my view there. All right. Zooming in and out is very smooth. And I think Altium is just zooms in and out very smoothly, regardless of the operating system, unless you're just running, trying to run it on a potato. All right. This 28 pin schematic is uh, credit goes to Fedevil Academy or Robert Ferranic. All right. The pages load quickly. Let's close all the documents and see how long they take to pull up. Very fast, okay. If I were to right click on here, sheet symbol actions, open the cover. Oh, this is the block diagram looks like. Okay, all right. That was very fast. Okay, so this says it's the cover page, but it actually should be the block diagram looks like. Okay. All right, and then we have the main schematic. All right, not bad. So let's go ahead and double click on the PCB, see how long that takes to load. Okay, the software is thinking. Ah, wow. This is no slower. In fact, it's a little bit faster on this machine loading the PCB than on my machine. So that's very interesting let's go ahead and put this in 3d view mode by hitting three on the keyboard and that was quite quick all right and i can move it around without jitter or any issues hold on the shift key let's rotate this around wow that's very good what if i want to route some nets let's say mm, let's say i want to delete this net so i select this and delete it now let's route the net. Mm, okay, so a bit of a slight delay there in getting into the route, the routing mode. But the, the follow is not bad. Okay, got an antenna happening. All right. It's not, I mean, let's see. I wouldn't call it buttery smooth, but neither is my current laptop sometimes. Yeah. But this is, I wouldn't call it buttery smooth, but it's smooth. A little bit of jitter here and there, but it's almost unnoticeable. Now I imagine this may become, you know, you start to see performance, uh, choke points in performance, the more complex you make your printed circuit boards, but the basic designs, this works very, very well. I am super impressed by the M1 chip. From the results I see here, M the M1 chip just knocks it out of the park. Uh, the Altium performance on this machine is a bit faster in a number of ways, it's a bit faster than my current 2015 MacBook Pro. Uh, now, fair enough if that this computer is six years after my 2015, but you know, the 2015 is no slouch. It does have a quad core i7 processor that are that 
are clocked at 2.6 or 2.8 gigahertz per processor and they can get overclocked or go up to 3.0 3.3 something like that all right and with 16 gigabytes of ram but just amazing how at a fraction of the power consumption the m1 is just ridiculous that's that's what it is now we need to use altium designer to test this right so i highly recommend clicking on the link in the description below that's a special unique link to get the altium designer free trial you get it for a number of days you're able to test it out you can even use the free trial to do my free online course on youtube it's somewhere in the link somewhere you can click on that build your own pcb in altium from scratch i do everything step by step just as a little note so go ahead download the free trial and get started all right so this answers the question does altium designer run on the latest windows arm operating system on paralleled on the m1 macbook it does uh now my specifications are 16 gigabytes and of ram and i have one a one terabyte ssd inside this machine all right if it, you have 512 gigabytes you'll be fine 256 even what matters is the ram and the processor and whatever magic they're doing here in the chip it just it's just amazing altium runs fine now on the m1 macbook pro so if you are on the fence about whether you should get an m1 macbook or get an intel macbook solely because you want to use or run altium from my from my results here you've seen them altium is looking like a champ right now i'll have to do more design work uh, to verify and give an update later on but how it's looking right now this is this thing is it's beautiful all right thanks so much for watching i hope that answers your question and go ahead and get that m1 macbook it'll run just fine